To forgive is to set a prisoner free, only to find out that the prisoner was me. Louis B. Smeeties. For this talk, I wanna take you on a quick trip down memory lane to what the younger generation refers to as the late 1900s. <laughs> because I'm talking about the 90s, it's accurate, but it's rude. <laughs> you, know? you see, in the 90s, we used cameras that weren't attached to our cell phones. These cameras required film that had to be developed in order to capture life's special moments. Now, I won't go in depth about the film development process because that's not why we're here. But what I will share is this. One of the most essential steps in the film development process requires darkness. Without the darkness, we would never get a clear picture. Now, many of us have experienced darkness. Maybe that's childhood trauma, a series of failed relationships, self-sabotaging behavior like toxic masculinity, or even an act of God. Either way, much like the film development process, that dark place wasn't designed to destroy us, it was designed to develop us. Now for years, I struggled with the burden of unforgiveness, but I've done the work to develop three steps on how to forgive and live past life's dark moments. The first step in that process is Reflection. Reflection requires space and intentionality. Reflection presents an opportunity to find something positive in a negative situation. Now, if you're anything like me, you need to understand why things happen, but reflection requires you to ask a different question. What? What developed in me in that dark place? What can be done about how I feel today? Once you understand what, Forgiveness moves from being impossible to, okay, maybe I can do this. I had my first moment of reflection a few years ago. I was on a commute in LA traffic. Needless to say, life had given me time and space. <laughs> so as I reflected on what I was going home to, I started to think there was something missing. Like, no, I had furniture, but what I didn't have is other people and their loving energy. And I was okay with that. So I started asking what questions, like, what got me here? Because I grew up in a family that was very close-knit, full of love and friendship. What changed? Well, here's my truth. In my preteen years, my young parents didn't do everything right. They made decisions that left me feeling alone here. First, it was my dad. He made a decision and was no longer with our family. But it was okay because I had my mom and my sister. Some time later, my mom was in a toxic relationship and my sister and I decided to leave her house. But it was okay because we had each other until we didn't. You see, I watched my family unit shrink right before my eyes and loneliness was no longer a place that I would visit when I wanted a hug from my mom or a kiss from my dad. It became home. But on this day, inching up the 110 freeway, I discovered the positive in my negative situation. You see, I realized that if my parents had been who I wanted them to be then, I wouldn't be the person that I am proud to be now. To make it a little bit biblical, those things had worked together for my good. Jay-Z puts it this way, things in life happen for you, not to you. These things had happened for me because here I am alone, but it hits differently. Now, by truly submitting to this first step, it makes step two in the process a no-brainer. The first step is reflection. The second step is to release. Now, the release is the actual forgiveness. The release is like going into your phone, pulling up your photos, selecting the memories that you don't want to remember, and deleting them. You're, what you're releasing is the best version of yourself by not being stuck in a place where you were hurt, violated, or dishonored. You're releasing mental space being occupied by things of the past. You're also releasing people in situations that no longer serve you. Now I have to tell you that the release looks totally different for every situation. For example, because I wanted to maintain a relationship with my parents without animosity, the release looked like a conversation that I allowed to happen organically. 
I was able to understand who they are as people and not just parents. I was also able to understand that their actions weren't done maliciously. That was good for my healing. I was able to share with them the, the positive that I had discovered in the reflection step. That was good for their healing. Those conversations took our relationship to a new level and it's a pleasure to watch them get it right with my daughter, Marley. Now, where there isn't a relationship to be salvaged, the release looks totally different. Here's another truth. I had a list of people who lived rent-free in my head because they hurt me once upon a time. And there was this one person in particular, I knew it was time to forgive her because I had reached an all-time low and made a Facebook post about it. <laughs> Now, I won't go into the petty details of the post, but what I will share is this. My high school counselor once told me that I shouldn't reach so high because I might not make it. Boy, was she wrong. But I still needed to release that because I sat at my computer with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and I still held on to those, those bad feelings. So here's what I did. I went through the process. Upon reflection, I realized that her words were not a barrier standing in front of me, but that negative energy actually helped push me toward my destiny. I know Mary J said no, but I actually needed her hate oration in my dancery. <laughs> but I still needed to release her. So this is what I did. I wrote down who I needed to forgive and why. I read it to myself in a mirror. I laughed a little bit. And then I destroyed the paper. Now, by destroying the paper that my pain was written on, that was my commitment to releasing that last bit of negative energy that I held on to. Now, I would love to tell you that writing it down and destroying the paper will prevent you from ever thinking about that situation again. It will not. But because you've done the work, the thoughts will come, but they won't stay. Now, after I had my moment of reflection and release with my parents and with Counselor X, I felt the burden of unforgiveness lift off of me. It felt so good that I wanted to feel it again because after all, I had a list of people. Which brings me to this third step in the process, to remember. First step, reflection. Second step, release. The third step is to remember. By remembering how good it felt to unburden yourself from those past experiences, it makes it a lot easier to go through this cyclical exercise again. By remembering that forgiveness is not about what they deserve, but about what you deserve it makes it a lot easier to go through this process. And by remembering that you deserve to be present and to be happy right here, right now, it makes it a lot easier to go through this process. Now, some of you may be watching and you're thinking, that's pretty cool, but I don't think it's gonna work for the things that I've experienced. I lost a loved one in a brutal way. I've been through some things that are really heinous. There's no positive to be discovered. Let me start by saying, I hear you and I see you. And where you are right now, that may very well be true. But I wanna submit for your consideration that the good that you discover in your experiences may not be something that you receive, it may be something that you give. What I'm saying is the good in your situation may not flow to you, it may flow through you. And what does that look like? A book, a podcast, TEDx Inglewood? I don't know, but I look forward to consuming it. Give yourself some grace and take all the time you need. But when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, reflect on the things that you've experienced, release what no longer serves you, and remember that you deserve to be happy. Reflect, release, remember. Reflect, release, remember. Won't you join me? Reflect, release, remember. One more time, reflect, release, remember. Picture yourself free of the burden of unforgiveness. Thank you.